You know, these photos I'm about to introduce weren't actually from Japan. Hello there! How's it going? This is Hiro from Chirax Japan. In today's video, I'll be talking about a fascinating topic the miracle of Japan transforming into Europe in just over 30 years. Fashion and lifestyle in the Warring States period. So let's dive right in together. Speaking of which, have you heard of this before? It's called a rough, and it was quite the trend in medieval Europe. When you think of rough, who comes to mind? This picture really takes me back. It's quite rubbish, isn't it? I can't help but imagine it might be a bit cumbersome to move around in. It really gives off the medieval European vibe, right? But what do you think of this painting? Folks, have you noticed something here? These are Japanese people, right? If you look closely, you can see they are holding swords. And if you examine the photo closely, you'll notice something else. There's a cross right in the middle of their chests. Crosses are associated with Christianity, right? But why? Rough. They were trend in mid 16th century medieval Europe. They were color like accessories worn to keep the easily dirty neckline clean. Despite being uncomfortable to wear, people wore them as symbols of wealth, power, and status. This fashion was quintessentially medieval Europe. Medieval Europe, but surprisingly, Japanese samurai also wore these ruffs in the mid 15th century. Portuguese introduced Western culture to Japan, and we have photos of samurai wearing ruffs to prove it. This is Ito Mansho. He became deeply involved in Christianity, that he even traveled to meet Pope Gregory XIII. If you look closely at the paper he's holding in the middle, it says IAPONICVM, which means Japan. Quite the determination, right? Next up, we have Constancio Dodio, wearing a stylish ruff. He went to Lisbon, learned the art of printing, and introduced the first typography to Japan. And lastly, there is Amaksa Shiro. He also became deeply involved in Christianity, and his enthusiasm led to a significant event in Japanese history. I'll save that story for another video. Now, here is Francis Xavier, the one who brought Christianity to Japan. Wait a minute, he's not wearing a ruff. Why is that? Now, as we look back on the history of the time, one crucial piece of evidence can be found in the number folding screens. These screens were decorative paintings used as room dividers during the era. They depict scenes of trade between Spain and Portugal and Japan. Trade? That's right, the world was in the age of exploration back then, and these ships arrived in Japan. This particular ship came from Portugal. If you take a closer look, you can even spot people on board who seems like they are about to fall into the sea. What a way to travel. They were quite daring one today. Hey, what are you doing? You'll die up there. What I'm doing? I'm just enjoying the view from here. Have you ever heard of Peter Pan? If you wish upon a star, you can even fly through the sky. That's got nothing to do with this. Come on down already. As for these number folding screens, there's a sad truth to them. Take a closer look at the painting. You see people with dark skin, and the majority of them are actually black slaves. Some are holding parasols, while others are carrying high-ranking nobles. Many of these slaves were primarily of Slavic descent, and it's believed that the word slave in English originated from the sound change of the word Slav during this time. By the way, the fashion of Portugal and the Netherlands back in those days looked something like this. Wow, they were all about the grammar and really seemed to enjoy their sense of style, didn't they? Mm -hmm. 
the number of folding screens are even more intriguing upon closer inspection. You'll find boars, camels, dogs, and even elephants. How on earth did they manage to bring elephants here? This photo captures Europeans dining in a place called Dejima in Japan. What stands out is how they've stylishly curled their hair, right? In Japan, this era was referred to as the Nanban period. Nanban originally meant to the uncivilized regions to the south and unfortunately became a derogatory term. It's quite a story, isn't it? This was the initial reaction of the Japanese when European culture was first introduced to Japan. What's with those peculiar color sleeves? It's like they are frilled lizards or something. As you can imagine, back then, the Japanese didn't initially find it impressive. Rather, they poked fun at Western fashion and were left astonished and bewildered. But take a look at this photo. It's a, such an elegant scene, isn't it? And believe it or not, these are Japanese people. They seem to blend right into the Namban culture, don't they? Now, if you examine their pants closely, does the shape of their pants remind you of Meijiro Ashika doll? What comes to mind for all of you? Also, as you explore this photo further, you spot a samurai with a top knot, but embracing European style attire. That's a samurai, right? Ultimately, the Japanese got really into Namban culture, and guess who played a pivotal role in all of this? That's all thanks to the marketing genius of the warring state of shogunate, Oda Nobunaga. He was quite the foreign goods enthusiast, and an eccentric character in the blink of an eye, he spread European culture among the samurais. It's incredible influence, isn't it? Take a good look at me. Pretty unusual, right? This is what they call diversity, haha. <laughs> Lord Nobunaga sure is eccentric. Is this what they call charisma? Now, from here on, I'd like to continue introducing more unique things that were further influenced by the West. The Japanese man depicted in the upper center is wearing karusam pants. With his deep blue haori and sharp black karusam, he gives off quite a stylish and confident vibe, don't you think? He was one of those fashionable samurai who embraced Portuguese fashion trends early on. Even the Christian religious item, the rosary, became a quite a trend in the painting stalls on these folding screens. You can see rosaries being sold. Some non-Christians even wore rosaries more as accessories than for religious reasons. As expected of Oda Nobunaga, who was quite the trendsetter, he even wore a cape like this. By the way, this was displayed as a memento of Japanese historical dramas. It's made of gold. So dazzling, he's even wearing a cape, huh? And what's really interesting is that if you take a closer look, you'll notice that the two people on the right are wearing black coats. Would you believe they were actually raincoats? They were quite waterproof. Now, let's take a look at Japanese armor with a touch of European twist. Doesn't that pointed headpiece look kind of cute in a way? Compared to the armor we've seen so far, it's rather stylish, don't you think? Western European armor often featured shapes like this. And I can't help but see a striking resemblance to the Morion helmets worn by Spanish soldiers of that time. Furthermore, during this era, the grandest of Western Christian architecture was the Florence Cathedral. This cathedral had an octagonal dome at its central top, and atop that, there was a small lookout tower accessible from the outside. Interestingly, the double lookout towers of Adachi Castle bore a striking resemblance to the design of this cathedral. It's quite possible that Japanese castles were influenced by European architecture, you know? 
And do you know what Japanese cuisine involves taking ingredients like seafood, meat, and vegetables, coating them in a batter primarily made from wheat flour, and deep frying them? That's right, it's tempura. And here's the interesting part tempura also found its way into Japan through this Namban culture. While tempura is widely recognized worldwide as part of Japanese cuisine, the surprising twist is that its origin isn't Japan. It actually started in Portugal. So, folks, what did you think? The unexpected culture and fashion of the Sengoku era, right? It might have been a super short period, just around 30 years. But it was a time when Japan got the taste of European culture, made by Europe. The influence of foreign cultures was truly remarkable. And last but not least, something we shouldn't forget. Christianity. Let's talk about famous visitor who arrived on these shores by ship, Francis Xavier. He came all the way to Japan to spread Christianity. Here is the interesting part. He offered to introduce Christianity to the shoguns in exchange for selling them firearms. As a result, around half of a million Japanese people at the time are said to have embraced Christianity. Even Amakusa Shiro was one of those Christian shoguns or daimyos who felt Christian influence. So that's why he was rocking those ruffs, you see? Wouldn't it be fair to say that this Namban culture was a significant influence of Japan, offering its people a broader perspective than they ever had before? It truly left a lasting mark on Japan as we know it today. Don't you think? If you found this video interesting, please hit that like button. As always, thank you so much for your support. See you next time. Take care and chillax.